preparation to the NEET PG in the last 90 days matters a lot. Dashrat and many more who are all online, can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you? Rahul Vyas and many more, can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear for you? The last 90 days of preparation, you have to consolidate what all that you have studied. Totally, there are 20,000 points that any one should master. There is no shortcut before they go to the exam. I want 10,000 minutes of you, 150 hours of you. By the time you and me together revise these 20,000 bullets so that invariably out of the 300 questions you are able to answer 80% of the questions correctly. So that is going to be the goal of this session. I am very happy to see Jesse Melly saying loud and clear, very good. So all of you download the UMedico app, shortly we are introducing a feature called the notes where the points you can bookmark, you will get notifications of the reminders of the points, you can set up the reminders and uh, many more features we are adding into the UMedico app. All these notes is going to come into the UMedico app shortly, right? So let's make the beginning. Vitamins is one of the favorite uh, topic, very high yield topic for the NEET PG, USMLE, any exam that you go. So vitamin A is required for night vision, all of you know. And vitamin A is also involved in CSF production. That's the reason whenever vitamin A excessiveness, toxicity is there, it can lead to development of a pseudotumor cerebri and that lead to development of papal edema. So what you are able to see here is a typical fundal picture of how a papal edema in pseudotumor cerebri looks like. So how do you treat pseudotumor cerebri of the vitamin A toxicity doc? Serial lumbar punctures and acetazolamide, the bullet which you should not forget. Favorite question of the examiner, the treatment of the pseudotumor cerebri, you have to be doubly sure. Acetazolamide is what you need to basically remember. So in an image based exam, whether it is USMLE or NEED PG or any exam, a case history will be given to you that somebody has taken uh, uh, all the clinical features of pseudotumor cerebral, cerebri is being given to you and a MRI is given. So what do you recognize? What do you see in this MRI? You can see the areas of the hyper intensity. So bilateral optic nerve which is very tortuous is what you are able to see. And uh, you can also see prominent CSF spaces, which is classical of pseudotumor cerebri. So acetazolamide is going to be the buzzword, which you are not going to forget. I am very happy to see 48 online viewers. The next 90 days before January, I am going to spend every day a couple of hours in the evening along with you. Every year is an opportunity for the teacher to once more revise all the 19 subjects and around 20,000 points along with you. I should in fact thank you for giving me this opportunity to become a student once more. Prepare the notes, come and talk to you and uh, share that exam tension anxiety along with you. So that is the whole idea. So acetazolamide, pseudotumor cerebri, buzzwords, bullets, which you should not forget. Now, what do you want to remember three to four bullets on vitamin D? For the parathormone, it is a cofactor. And uh, moans, groans, bones and stones, you all know very well about the hyperparathyroidism. There are pains involves the bones, lead to nephrolithiasis, stones and psychic moans. 
is the classical feature of hyperparathyroidism. And typically liver stores all these fat soluble vitamins and uh, any excess of them if you take too much vitamin A or vitamin D, you don't lose it in urine and that leads to development of a toxicity. Toxicity exists only for two important vitamins. You need to remember vitamin A and vitamin D. Now, few bullets on vitamin B1. It is also called thymine. It is an important cofactor of the dehydrogenases. And transketolase is an important bullet you need to remember when it comes to thymine. Very, very, where you see the heart failure. It's called wet beriberi -beri when the presentation is with the cardiac failure. And it's called dry beriberi -beri when it is with the peripheral neuropathy. Many of these, you know that. I know that very well. But some of these are very critical, crisp points, which are the favorite questions of the examiner. If you take 300 questions in need PG, 240 questions you can do skating and answer it. You don't need a lot of preparation. But around 10 to 20 percent question paper, you need to know a few critical keywords. If you are not very sure, that's going to make all the difference. Wernicke, Senkephalopathy, Korsakoff, Psychosis, all of you know very well. But what are the two important bullets you need to remember when it comes to Wernicke, Senkephalopathy? Is it the parietal lobe, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, anterior temporal, posterior temporal examiner will play with your happiness. So it is the posterior temporal lobe, which is the one which shows the pathological lesions in Wernicke's encephalopathy. And what are the triad of clinical features, doc, in Wernicke's encephalopathy? You should not forget ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, and psychosis. And in Korsakoff psychosis, one of the common mistakes the students do in exam is when examiner asks is it the anterograde amnesia or retrograde amnesia? They will be weaving, oh I know Korsako, I know Korsako, but is it anterograde or retrograde? Oh, I don't remember. You should not struggle on such very frequently asked questions. It is the anterograde amnesia, confabulation. What is confabulation? The viva was you feel like a uh, you remember all the answers of the questions asked by the examiner in a fragmented way. But actually, you cannot recall anything in exam hall. That's called confabulation. So, mammillary bodies, anterograde amnesia, confabulation are the three bullets that should come to your mind when there is a question on Korsakoff psychosis in tomorrow's meet. Whenever you can put on the fan. Whenever Wernicke's encephalopathy is there, remember confusion, cerebellar ataxia, ophthalmoplegia, and the presence of petechial hemorrhages in the mammillary bodies are the classical points that you have to basically remember. Very happy to see Anjali, Pawar, Muniza, Kumar, and many more. Very good, very good. Now, Doc, I'll give you one quick case presentation of Wernicke's encephalopathy, a 28-year-old woman, if a clinical venient based uh, question happened to come, just like in USMLE, few questions also come in need PG. If at all a question comes on Wernicke's encephalopathy, how will be the clinical venient? 28-year-old woman presented with vertigo, confusion, and she has fallen two weeks before, after a surgical abortion, at 11 weeks of gestation and that particular pregnancy where she had abortion was she had a persistent hyperemesis gravidarum and on clinical examination she has got a gaze evoked nystagmus and gait ataxia though there is no ophthalmoplegia. So whenever you have hyperemesis you are vomiting continuously and uh, you are one of the vulnerable person to land in very very. So whenever you land in very, very, typically you get all the clinical presenting features and when, when you have done the imaging on her, neuroimaging, you can appreciate the presence of the mammillary bodies which are showing the lesions which are the classical features.